Sorry, can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I should be looking at these questions too. <laughs> this might be All the right. intro. <laughs> <laughs> um, for people who haven't heard of you, could you give us some background as to who you are and how you got into speedrunning? Uh, for people who haven't heard of me, um, I like to describe myself as the author blues of speedrunning that plays actual good games. Um, the joke in that is that author blues has a history of speedrunning a lot of games that are not that great. And the comparison is I like to speedrun a lot of games that I feel are good, but also like there are more hidden gems. In terms of background, um, I started off as a Mario Maker streamer. Um, I did a lot of viewer levels, view, uh, level requests um, for the, when the Wii U was released in 2015. Um, I started streaming out of a basic curiosity. Um, I was kind of like envious of people that were live streaming and I've been watching people stream on, on Justin TV back in 2009. Pretty decent amount of people watching me. Um, but I did get really burnt out. And then in December of 2015, I booked a ticket to uh, AGDQ 2016 for January, and I started learning Contra 3, my, I guess my first official speed run. And I got an okay time. It was like a, I think a 15 minute or sub 15 minute. Um, but I wasn't really enjoying speed running that game, even though it was a game from my childhood. And I, probably gave up on it after about a week and I ended up canceling my ticket for AGDQ for one reason or another but I ended up regretting it because I watched AGDQ 2016 the entire week and I was like man I wish I was here so I ended up working hard again I started learning I started looking for a new speed game that was like easy to learn but difficult to master and I went on speedrun.com I did a lot of research so I started learning Kirby's Dreamland and I I believe March, right before submissions were for SGDQ, some, um, were ending. Mm -hmm. And I spent about a week putting uh, a bunch of time in the Kirby's Dream Land, probably like between one and 200 attempts. I ended up getting a 1215. My new PB in, in Kirby's Dream Land is a 1202, and that's the last time I um, ever attempted. And I ended up getting um, accepted as a backup runner for my first GDQ that I went to live. So, you know, my admission was free. I didn't have to pay the admission. But that's pretty much how I got started in the speedrunning five, about five years ago. Um, how did that transition into you one day saying that, hey, I want to learn Demon's Crest? I didn't think about learning Demon's Crest until approximately six months ago. Um, okay. So, I mean, there's some, I, I would say a lot of speedrunners or maybe some speedrunners who are also like this, but I'm like, I like to absorb a lot of information. So what I do is I'll go on the internet and I'll look up Wikipedia's lists of like the lists of games that came out for this console. And I'll go through every game that I've either, I've either already heard of or I haven't heard of that sounds cool. Or, and I also went on YouTube. I had a lot of downtime in quarantine. Yeah. And they have these YouTube playlists that go through, like, they're, like, I think five to ten second snippets of every game released on the console, even if it was Japanese, English, or European released only. Oh. And, I'd be like, and I'll just notch that down on a spreadsheet in my Google Docs. So Demon's Crest, I already knew about it. I, I was aware of it. I played it. I rented it as a kid, but it wasn't anything I really got into. Um, I never finished the game. So basically, I have a list of running games that I might be interested in speedrunning, but I gotta like really delve deep into it. I gotta play it, I gotta do a playthrough. Uh, with Demon's Crest, I just liked, I was doing my playthrough a few, like two or two months ago and I just liked the art style. I really enjoyed the music, the pixel art and the background art, the characters, it's very extremely well done. It's one of the best uh, pixel art games I think that came out on the console up up there we don't have plans to return the speedrun demons crest right now which i don't know if this will answer a future question you have but if i were to return to it it would definitely be for 100 because that just the playthrough is just a lot of fun 
all right i respect that i like how um you know you started from a casual playthrough and i like to know that you're very detail oriented um i think that's very interesting and something to keep in mind as we move forward throughout this interview um i want to touch a bit on your pb progression and how has the progress been and what hurdles have you encountered as you've been climbing the leaderboards throughout demon's crest i know you played it for quite a while and offline we also talked about that you haven't played it within three weeks but could you give us some background as to you know where you started as compared to where you ended um with demon's crest any percent um i typically will submit a leaderboard pb when i feel comfortable that i've done a fair amount of optimization on a rough pb i'm not going to submit something that's probably going to be like a one hour speed run for a 10 minute you know top time so demon's crest the world record i believe is like a 10 30. yeah for any percent roughly. i think it's like a 10 30 as well 10 36. correct me something if I'm wrong. like that yeah and um so i probably wouldn't submit a pb for that unless it was a sub 20. Mm -hmm. so i might get pbs offline but I probably wouldn't submit a leaderboard position until I got like a sub 20. And then I'll probably, so I do like to have a, some type of uh, historical record on speedrun.com because yeah. every speedrun you submit on speedrun.com does get logged and your, you know, all your links. If you upload your split files to speedrun.com, they do get saved on there as well. So you can like view how you prog an individual progressed in terms of um, you know the length of time they were submitting, you know how long they've been running the game, how many PBs they did, how many seconds they overall saved each PB. Yeah, um, I believe I only submitted two PBs for Demon's Crest on the leaderboards because my first initial submission was fairly decent. Now, um, you did touch upon how you know you're not going to really submit like an hour time when the, the record is like. 10 minutes and things like that how many attempts would you say that you have done that aren't on speedrun.com attempts that are not submitted like including resets i guess that would mean more completed runs i'm trying to reset less nowadays but sometimes i i forget to do no reset runs i would say with demon's crest i would probably have about 40 40 uh, completed run attempts really without you know what total attempts not with including resets probably 200. all right yeah everyone has like a, a sort of standard when it comes to uh, you know submitting a game personally for me I, i'm my first run was like i think like 30 something minutes and i said to myself i'm not submitting that i just know that's my run but then once i started getting a bit lower which is my current pb on speedrun.com that's when I was like, okay, I can show the world that, but the world can't know that I just spent like 30 something minutes on a speed run for Demon's Crest. Yeah. Like I said, like to have some type of, uh, you know, even if, if it's second to last place, as long as it's not an hour over, depending on how long the run is, if I'm submitting an hour long run for a, an 11 minute world record, I'm probably going to wait a little bit more. So there are many ways for people to get into speed running. And that being said, do you think Demon's Crest Any% percent is a good beginner-friendly game to start? For someone's first speedrunner? Yeah. I would say there's better games. There's a few reasons why I believe Demon's Crest would not... It's not advanced, um, for, but I wouldn't say it's very beginner-friendly. For a beginner-friendly speedrun, I mean, ideally you want some challenge. Mm-hmm. I would say the combination of movement execution and the boss fights would probably make it more of an intermediate level speedrun. Really? Um, well, so for beginner speedruns, I always recommend Kirby's Dream Land for the Game Boy, which you can play on an emulator, you can play it on the Super Game Boy, you can play it on the Super Game Boy 2. Um, and the reason why I recommend it is because one, it's accessible. Two, it's a Nintendo property. Three, the movement is very low execution. It's easy to learn, but difficult to master movement and execution wise. And the boss fights, while they're very RNG based like Demon's Crest, they're not as challenging as Demon's Crest. And if you learn to speedrun Demon's Crest, particularly any percent, 
The any percent bosses are actually the harder bosses in the game compared to the other bosses in a 100% playthrough or run. Um, with some exceptions, but if you look at, um, I'm trying to remember his name, it starts with a B. I think it's like Belth or Belthos. That's the skeleton boss in the graveyard in the city. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a really, that's not a beginner level, like learning boss. I'm trying to think of the other boss, um, the one that's Flyer. Flyer is not a beginner. Oh, Fleer? Boss Fleer? Boss. Yeah. Yeah. That is definitely not a beginner level boss to learn how to, like, as someone who's speedrunning platformers for, you know, since I started, that is just not an easy boss fight, and it's a run killer. Yeah, it um, really is. And even Flame Lord can be challenging when you want to learn the higher level strats, or you're doing, like, I don't know if you have gotten to this point yet with Flame Lord, but you can, if you calculate the damage you do in Flame Lord, you can save four and a half seconds by doing the last hit of damage on him so you don't have to walk over to the the power up pickup that he drops if you kill him like if you are right on him mm -hmm. and you and you kill him on the last hit you'll actually he'll he'll drop the power up and you'll just drop right on it as well so you save 4.5 seconds so like the higher level strats for the bosses or that boss and like flare like extreme it's just I, I wouldn't recommend it for a beginner speedrun. I would recommend it if it's like your favorite childhood game and you're like, oh man, I can really get into this. You're really good at platformers and you're fairly good at, you know, beating games like Super Meat Boy or uh, Celeste. So if we sit here and then we try to create create um like a compare and contrast between a game that is more beginner and a game that's more intermediate. What qualities would make this game both a beginner game and both a intermediate game? So what I mean by that is, does Demon Crest have any qualities that would make it any type of beginner friendly type of game? I would not recommend it as a beginner friendly game. The only parts that are beginner friendly are the, is the first stage um, because you're literally jumping and flying. And when you're flying, there's no penalty from flying. So Demon's Crest is the third game in a series of uh, games called Gargoyle's Quest for the NES and Game Boy. Mm -hmm. and, and in Gargoyle's Quest for Game Boy and NES, you have a flight meter. You can only fly a certain amount of time, and when the flight meter runs out, you drop. Yeah. So that, that creates an interesting dynamic in the platforming. Now with Demon's Crest, you fly, you fly indefinitely. You float, typically, for, for the most part. Yeah. And, and um, there's no penalty. So in the first stage, you know, the first boss is incredibly easy. It's the first, literally the first thing you do in the game. And then in the speed run, if you, or even casually platforming, if you learn to, you know, exploit the game mechanics, you're literally just floating across the level and jumping and, you know, grabbing the edges of walls if you have to. There's very, very little time to lose other than the boss fights. The only aspect that makes it beginner friendly is that the speed run is short. Um, because when a speed run, the length of a speed run allows you to learn a game quicker. So if you learn, let's say you want to learn a very short speed run, you'll probably, a good recommendation is probably going to be Donkey Kong for the NES. Yeah. Why, why would I recommend Donkey Kong for the NES? It has, it's a short game. It's the, you know, most PBs are a minute and 10 seconds. Um, there's glitch, there's a glitch in it that it's not too difficult to learn, but it saves a lot of time in the first level. Um, and there's three stages. With the shorter a game is speedrun wise, the quicker you're going to learn it. Like if I'm going to learn an RPG, I'm going to probably need a couple weeks to grind out a bunch of stuff and learn certain sections of the game before I even attempt an initial speedrun. Just because you have in, in an RPG speedrun, you have to learn. Um, Mostly you don't have to learn where to go. Going from point A to point B in RPG speedruns is literally going from point A to point B and remembering not to get lost. Yeah. But in RPGs, boss fights. You're usually under-leveled in boss fights. You have to learn, oh, if the boss did something different, I have to do something else. So you have to think of backup strats yeah. constantly. Um, and then making sure you pick up correct items and you know any items that'll defeat bosses quicker managing status effects buffs and debuffs yeah there's another uh, layer to it there's another layer to learning those type of games as compared to a shorter game compared to a shorter game um 
what's I'm trying to think of an example. Um, I so with Donkey Kong, I'll go back to Donkey Kong. So long as you can pick up on things, like with Donkey Kong, it took me ten to twenty minutes to learn how to speedrun it. Mm -hmm. you know? So if you, I'm not going to use any exact advanced math with logarithms or exponents, but when you learn a ten minute run, it's probably I, I imagine it's going to take me an hour to learn the base run and yeah. then, you know, to get off the ground. That's a good um, estimated time. I would agree on that. So, yes, there's different aspects I would grade to judge a game if it's beginner friendly. I would recommend Demon's Crest as a beginner level speed run if you want to learn a short speed run, the any percent route, mm -hmm. and you are familiar with the game already. Like it was something that you remember from your childhood, or you're a fan of Demon's Quest, you enjoy Gargoyle's Quest, um, you enjoy platformer games but haven't speedrun a platformer game. Maybe I would lean towards the beginner side. Um, I think there is other recommendations I would recommend before Demon's Quest for a beginner level speedrun. This has been a very insightful interview and i appreciate your time my final question is is there any tips or words of wisdom you would like to give out to the people who are watching try it don't invest a lot of money into it at first you don't need to spend two three hundred dollars on a capture card you don't need to buy a console you can use an emulator if you're starting out speed running don't be like sid and you know invest a thousand bucks in all your equipment and quit your job wow um <laughs> damn uh, damn my heart oh my ankles Ooh. <laughs> uh, no. i would recommend just doing it um a lot of people ask you know how do i get started speed running and it kind of bothers me sometimes because the the quickest way to do it or like how to do something is to just do it the yeah. more time you waste asking for help or talking about it, there are so many resources. You could watch a YouTube on how, on how to do anything. You can Google anything. Honestly, the only way I got started speedrunning was I picked up a game and I started playing it quick. And then I reset the timer and then I pl tried playing it quicker and then I repeated. Yeah. Um, there, There's really nothing else I would recommend to it. Um, this is coming from experience, you know, from someone who's built up a lot of information, um, trying to prepare for things and be overprepared. The more overprepared for, you are for something, the less likely you're going to do it. And the only recommendation I can have um, for speedrunning is if you want to try it, just try it. If it's not something for you, there's nothing wrong with being a fan of speedrunning. That's why we have events that go on all the time in marathons, like Games Done Quick, European Assembly, um, Speedrunner Assembly. I, even myself, there's often times where I take breaks. Like I, like Sid said earlier, I'm, it's been a few weeks since I even speedran anything. And I try to, you know, at least be consistent speedrunning something all the time. But, you know, there, there's also another thing I want to talk about. There's people that do get really burnt out on speedrunning. Yeah. Um, Tolu, a big name in the indie speedrunning community, he was a Shovel Knight speedrunner. Shovel Knight was his last speedrun. Um, the grind was so intense, he just, it was his official retirement. And he was a big indie um, PC game speedrunner. Like, he was a very top, good top time player. And it's, it can be easy to get burnt out on speedrunning. Uh, that's why, as of this year, my philosophy of speedrunning is don't take it too seriously. You know, it's good to have goals, but and it's okay to compare yourself against other people's times. But at the best thing to do is to compare yourself against your past self. You're here to have number one fun, and number two to improve upon your own time. When I was taking an art class in college, my professor, like I'd never drawn anything in my life that at a good level. And there are obviously people in the class who have natural talent. He had to drill in my mind every day that. I'm not grading you or comparing you to the people that, you know, over there who were born good at drawing or already had years of art school. I'm grading you on how you went from drawing a crappy square to drawing, you know, an extremely detailed picture. And I ended up being the most improved uh, student in the class because I went from being barely able to draw to, you know, making these really detailed drawings at the end. So 
my lesson is and wisdom is have fun go fast and then go faster you have to end this off with thank you for listening to my ted talk you have to end it off like that please <laughs> why because i talk a lot no it's because no it's just like that that was the perfect ending for it thank you for listening to my ted talk thank you for listening to my ted talk with less attitude please <laughs> no i'm kidding i'm gonna put my butt up to the mic and fart please do